What often people don't understand is death on the road comes without warning. If you drive fast and you lose control of the car, someone loses their life and is seriously injured. There's no going back from that. It is devastating for a family. They never get over it. How many people died on Irish roads last year? 250. 250. No. If you get it within 10, I'll give you a vest. Jim McAllister is my name. Uh, as you can tell from the accent, probably, I'm Scottish. Uh, I came here in 1982. Um, I was a policeman in Glasgow. Uh, I'd served for about five and a half years in predominantly in the city of Glasgow. I'd started off, as most policemen do, uh, in a station on the beat, progressed to driving the car, and then I decided to move to traffic. Uh, I did a spell in traffic for three months to see whether it suited me or not and then I transferred full time into traffic. So I finished traffic in Glasgow and then came to Ireland and I came to Templemore in April of 82. So over the next couple of days we will be at the Young Scientist exhibition which is going on in the RDS here in Dublin and what we do there is we bring along some of the pieces of equipment that we have so that there's a technological aspect to it. We show them for example the laser guns we use and we explain to them how they work and how they're operated. We show them the Draeger uh, drink driving testing equipment and how that's operated and we also have one of our command vehicles there. I give you a clue, it was the first time ever since records were kept that less than 200 people died on our roads. If I told you less than 200 died, why are you shouting 400 at me? Waking up and switch on the brain. How many? No. 174. 174, okay. Oh, hey, whoa. That's engaging. It's great to meet them. It's great to meet with youngsters. It's great to get a few answers off them, bounce a few answers off them, and then deal with them, you know? How many? One more, that's it. There you are. That's the radio, that's how we speak to each other. Yeah, cool, yeah. And that's then, that's to stop it from the engine, stop the engine where we want it. And these are all for the blue lights and siren. Why can't you put the siren on? No, because the whole hall would clear if we did that. The whole hall would clear. What's your name? John, good man, John. Would you like to ride a motorbike, would you? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say you would, all right. It wouldn't be hard to persuade you, would it? Good lad. Well, you have to work hard, get a good leaving, sir. The thing about this is that yeah. it takes a lot of breath because what it's doing is it's measuring the breath from deep in your lungs. Okay. So you'll have to blow for about eight to ten seconds. So take a good deep breath yeah. and blow continuously until I tell you to stop. Okay. All right. Now just I'll hold it there. Just oh, blow sorry. in here. Yeah. Ready. Whenever you're ready. We you go. Keep going. Keep going. That's fine. Now. Oh, now for the bad news. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's easier for people to approach us here because that's what we're here for, than to stop the car out in the street. They feel that the guards are busy, they're doing something else, we don't want to be asking them questions, so this gives them the opportunity. And it's all about promoting road safety, making them realise that they can make a difference, and that will keep us, hopefully, with a downward trend in the deaths. What probably motivated me to get involved in the road safety end of things after a number of years is that uh, on the motorbike, in traffic in particular, you were very often the first man at the scene of a crash, particularly a bad crash. So if we had very early on, we had first-hand information of, of what it was like. You come on a scene, it's quite horrific to deal with. Um, but believe it or not, the most difficult aspect of that job and the most challenging aspect of that job is when you have to go to someone's house, often in the early hours of the morning, often to talk to them about someone a young person, 17, 18, 20 years of age, and you break devastating news, and you know, you know, you sit for a minute or two uh, before you go up to the door, the house is in darkness, and it is really, it's one aspect of the job that you can never really come up with the ideal way to break news like that, and it really is very stressful. I don't mind, I don't like going along to a bad scene and dealing with bodies maybe with 
you know, that have been badly broken up. That is bad enough in its own right, but by far the worst is to go up to the door, try and get some form of words in your head that is going to break this news to a family, and then to have to watch that family just crumble and the devastation that your news brings to that family, to the extended family, to the neighbours in that community, to the people who work with these people. That is the most difficult aspect. I had originally thought about being a doctor, um, but I was very bad at chemistry. So I changed tack then and I went to Glasgow University studying accountancy. And I found that I didn't really like accountancy as a, as a subject so I decided I had enough of academia at that stage. So I left college but if you had said to me six weeks before that that I was going to finish up a policeman I would have laughed. To be perfectly honest I've never looked back since and I've had a f great time. It's been a career that I've really enjoyed. I've met lots of different people. I've had a very varied and interesting career if you like uh, when I think back on it and uh, it's been very good to me.